All right, peace and greetings, YouTubers. So, the 2018 Soul Train Awards. Now, you know, if you follow me, this is the award show I always gas up. It's always been a favorite of mine because, one, you actually get to hear some real singing. You know, the real vocalists are finally invited to the award show to participate. And then, of course, there's the band arrangements. Like, they actually have a real band. I'm not talking about the little two, three-piece band and the DJ. I mean, they have a whole nine, ten-piece band and, and 50 background singers. And then, look, they got somebody just to play the chimes. It's like, you don't get that at some of the other award shows. And so I always enjoy this award show, as well as the fact that it's always a really good balance of giving a lane to the veterans in music, those who've been out for a long time, those who may not necessarily be mainstream anymore, as well as giving a lane to the up and coming and to those who are current. And it's always been a really great camaraderie of just music and celebration. It's always been my favorite award show. Um, this year, it was still good, but it just seemed like it was missing something. And I think it's because there were a lot of people who just weren't there. Which is disappointing because, you know, for R&B acts, because in my opinion, the Soul Train Awards is pretty much an R&B show. There's a few hip hop acts and sometimes gospel acts added in, but it's pretty much an R&B award show, um, in my opinion. But, you know, as far as other award shows, that lane of visibility and that lane of exposure for R&B acts usually isn't there when you talk about a lot of the other award shows. So when you're talking about the VMAs or the Teen Awards or the Teen Choice Awards or the Billboard Awards or the AMAs or the, you know, whatever else they got out there. You know, usually R&B acts are kind of always put in the back. You know, they're not really the main headliners. Unless you're some big, top-notch, A-list R&B act who's crossed over into the pop world. You know, you, you might get some buzz. But, you know, the urban AC acts are never going to get a, 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 spot, a spot on the stage at something like the VMAs. Unless somebody's d died or something. You know, unless somebody's dead. Then, okay, let's go ahead and call the Legacy to come do the tribute. Let's call the Fantasia to come do the tribute. Let's see what Luke James is doing, see if he can come do this tribute, you know. Other than that, they're not getting, you know, that exposure. So it is disappointing when you see that so many people didn't show up. And I think because 2017 and 2018 were such breakout years for a lot of R&B acts, you know, it's kind of like, can y'all show up? Because if I see half y'all first in line and, and front row at some of these other award shows that you're not even invited to, it's disappointing to see that, but you don't really show up at the award shows that are really actually there to celebrate you and actually give you a lane. And I think it's from a marketing strategy, and I know I'm rambling, I'm gonna get to the award show in a second, but from a marketing strategy, um, for newer acts, one of the things that always works for a lot of entertainers with the Soul Train Awards, especially from the last 10 years, is that Soul Train Awards pretty much have an older viewing demographic. And so if you can go on that award show and, and, and really entertain or have a great uh, performance or speech or whatever you do, you know, that older demographic tends to actually go out and buy your music. You know, we're now in a streaming era where everybody's streaming. Older people don't really stream. They still buy music. They'll, they'll go to the store and actually get a physical copy of your album for $13.99 or they might go to iTunes and get that $9.99 copy. That brings in more revenue than something like a stream. You know, for, for a stream, I think you get point zero 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 six cent for, uh, per song. So I'm just saying, people got to kind of think long term and, and kind of be strategic about how they want to market themselves. But that's another conversation. Anyway, getting into the actual award show. Um, Tisha Campbell and Tashina Arnold, I think they have a great chemistry. I always enjoy those two together. They're, they're just really funny. I think they did a pretty good job hosting. Um, the opening was, was enjoyable to watch. It's, you know, very nostalgic. I always like to see people perform all the throwbacks and stuff from the 90s. So it was cool. I think they had a good balance um, of keeping everything entertained. I think the piece that made me laugh, if I had a part that made me laugh, first of all, the skit they had... Um, where they ate Erica Badu's little cookie things. At first I thought it was corny, but then at that very end, where um, Homegirl punched the girl on accident in the little skit, I was like, okay, I see what y'all doing. That was funny. Um, Belba DeVoe was the first set of performers. High energy, of course. And listen, I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes I'm tired of hearing Poison or Poison, but you know, it, that's their signature hit. That's gonna always be something that gets the crowd moving. And then if you're there live, it's just a totally different experience. Like Poison will always just be that crowd pleaser. But just going back to what I was saying earlier, even if you just look at the presentation that they were allotted to have as they performed, they had this big giant band. They had thousands of dancers. They had pyrotechnics. They had this, that, and third. Like, you know, if Bell Biff DeVoe was invited to another award show, they're not getting all of that. The MTV is not going to invest in all that. You know, here's a DJ and y'all got 30 seconds to make it work. You know, if it's the Grammys or the AMAs or the Billboard Awards, okay, we're not giving you all that, but you know what, here, go on to the B stage, you know, the secondary stage, and you get, you know, that stage they have that's just in the middle of the crowd with no band, and you get a minute and a half to do your song and get off the stage. But you see, the Soul Train Awards gave Bell Bib DeVoe, gave them everything. Like, you would have thought Bell Bib DeVoe had a number one hit on the charts as of 2018. So that's what I'm talking about. Um... And then, okay, I always mess this boy's name up. Is it Jacquez or Jacquez? Him, that guy. 
First of all, I didn't know he had his own music. And I'm not trying to be shady. I just, every time I've heard him, it's always been a cover of somebody else's song. But he performed. Um, people say he can't sing. I don't think it's that he can't sing. I just think um, a, a bit of polishing would help. But here's the thing about the Soul Train Awards again. Everything else around him just made everything so much more polished. Like, again, the musical arrangement was really, really good. He had some great, great backup singers. One of the backup singers kept trying it, though. I was like, you, are you trying to upstage the guy or what? But, I mean, again, Soul Train Awards gives you all of that support so that you can't even go on the Soul Train Awards and suck because everything is just too well put together. So even if you just go up there doing nothing, it's still going to be like this grand performance because the lighting is going to be good. You got a brass section. You got all that going, and it distracts. But as far as him and his performance... It was okay. That's the first time I've heard that song. Um, but yeah, I, I don't think he can't sing. I just think um, maybe some artist development. And I'm not trying to be shady. Hell, I need some vocal lessons myself. I'd be right there on YouTube. You know, YouTube got vocal lessons now. I'd be walking all around the apartment <laughs> like all day. Um, anyway, so yeah, Jaquez performed. At least, hey, he showed up. See, he understood. He recognized that, okay, this is probably a great way to get a bigger platform because a lot of people only know him from social media. They don't know him from actually having music, myself included. So, boom, you know, he knew what was up. Um, John B. performed, and of course it's always good to hear, you know, nostalgic tracks. His tone has gotten a lot deeper, too. That's the one thing. I feel like a lot of people who have those lighter voices, when they get older, those tones get a little heavier. Same with, um, oh, Kevon Edmonds is a perfect example. I saw an After 7 show not too long ago, and mind you, he's still hitting all the notes, but it's like, it's a different tone, but it's still good. So it's always good to, you just hear those throwbacks. Um... And Donald Jones performed as well. And can we just take a minute to reminisce and remember? Like, I feel Left Eye's verse on You Know What's Up, I don't think it gets enough praise. Like, she really ate that verse. You know, especially that line she had where the, because love is furious and I believe in blowing up spots. I'm like, oh, okay. I see what you referenced there. I ain't mad at you. Um, so they kind of had a, a joint performance together. And again, it goes back to what I was saying as far as how that house band just... I mean, it, it just enhances everything. Like, that band was so rich, um, and it just really, it, it puts an element of just, um, I'll just say excellence, hell. Um, it, it was like this element of just excellence and euphoria with the performances, because it, not only are these acts performing, but they're, they're getting all of the resources you give an A-list celebrity when they're doing a major award show. Like, they're not just half-stepping and saying, okay, these are a bunch of has-beens, so here's the DJ, you got two minutes, make it work. It's like, no, what do you want? You want, you want, some, you want some smoke? If you want some water to drip down and splash the audience what you want, we'll give it to you. Um, so that's always cool. My favorite part of the entire show, um, well, usually my favorite part, the cypher. Uh, and this year they had, they had Luke James, they had BJ the Chicago Kid, they had, is it Queen Naja? Queen Naja? Naja? Queen Naja? The, the, the new girl from, I think she's from YouTube, right? And then she got that hit everybody's talking about, and Kelly Price. Um, the cypher was good. I think they've had better ones. But I, I do think, again, this kind of closes the casket on conversations about the Queen Naja's vocals because people say she can't sing either. I'm like, damn, y'all be, criti be critical as I don't know what, but then y'all gas up all these humming refrigerator singers and give all of them a lane. But um, I thought she was in a good voice. She sounded good to me. I didn't see, hear anything wrong. I mean, you can't stand her next to Kelly Price and expect her to do much, but I thought she sounded fine. Um, Luke James is always in, in good voice, and I really, I want Luke James to win. I really do. I want him to win as far as him getting that hit. He has such a great voice, I just don't know if they found the right sound for him as far as his music. And I still think they dropped the ball, because when that New Edition movie came out, they should have had some singles in an album, like, boom, ready. Um, he's such a great talent. I've seen him live a few times, I mean, he just, he just doesn't disappoint. So, hopefully... Hopefully he can catch on uh, on a larger scale. I think people appreciate and recognize his voice, but that's literally all they give him. They don't give him that opportunity to really shine. And I think he has a gift, and it's just it just needs the right people to kind of plant that seed and let everything just kind of sprout into what it should be. But good for him. So he did really good. Of course, Kelly Price is Kelly Price. She's very underrated, too, as far as vocalist sometimes. Um, she was in really, really good voice. Um, let me see. If I had a favorite cypher that they've had before, the one where it was... Was it? It was... Gladys, Neo, who else was in that one? I think it was Gladys, Neo, it might have been BJ the Chicago, Chicago Hit again, and dang, I can't remember who else was in that one. Uh, maybe that was Angie Stone. Then I know there was another one where it, it was Layla Hathaway and Chrisette Michelle together. That was a really good one. Um, I know y'all still mad at Chrisette after the inauguration, but I, I, I thought that was a good one. Um, who else performed? And this is the problem, because, like, literally, this was, like, the whole award, so there was only, like, one other performance after this. So you had, you know, you also had the entertainers who were doing, like, the, um, 
the side stages. I forgot what you call it, but that was the Cautious Clay, and that was the, there's another young lady, I can't even think of the girl's name. But, you know, you had that. But other than that, you know, they had the Erica Badu piece where Erica went and she did, you know, she got her tribute and then she performed. Um, and did a great little medley there. You know, if I had a favorite Erica album, my favorite Erica album is somewhere between Worldwide Underground and Mama's Gun. Baduism is dope too, but something about that Mama's Gun, I think it's because all the tracks just float into each other. That used to just connect me. And Worldwide Underground has um, Bump It on there and Back in the Day and I Want You, which those are some of my favorite songs by her. So um, it just... You know, that's a good, great era. Um, but no, she had a great performance in really good voice, too. Her voice has gotten richer over the years, too. Um, like, her tone is extremely rich. Because even as I was watching her perform um, The Green Eyes, if you listen to how she performed it versus how the album version is, she's definitely belting it instead of using her head voice like she did on the album version. So I was like, you better get it, Erica. Nice, rich tone. And then, of course, they had the Faith Evans tribute, which I'm glad they gave Faith Evans her flowers because, you know, she gets very underrated, too. I think because she kind of, she and Mary kind of came out around the same time. You know, Mary came out first, but I think Faith always had to take a backseat to Mary for being honest. And it's not me trying to, like, start a beef or nothing. Um, Faith has always just kind of been, people like her, I feel, but she's always kind of been underappreciated. So I'm glad that she got some of her flowers. And, of course, she had a great performance as well. Um... And I mean, that was the award show. It's like there was nobody there. And so I'm like, dang, you know, we're all the way, you know, y'all, I know y'all could have called Mary, asked if Mary wanted to show up. Y'all could have called, you know, some of the other people. What was Jill up to? Uh, dang, you know, I see SZA was there, but I was like, y'all probably should have asked her to perform. Um, Daniel Caesar wasn't there to get his award. I'm like, oh, okay, all right. Now I gassed you up like a year and a half ago before you blew up. So don't, don't start stepping on the toes of all the people who were there for you. And now you didn't cross over, you got too good. But I think he's on tour, so I let him slide. Um, there were just so many people who weren't there. It's like, it just, it kills the award show. It, it, it you know, but I think Soul Train or, or the Arrangers, I don't know if Stephen Hill was in charge this year, but I think with who they had and what they were, you know, the, the resources they had, I still think they did a good job as far as, you know, the few performers they did have, they really polished it. Like, I think Faith Evans just blew it out of the water with the vocals. Erica Badu did the same. Um, I don't think there were really any bad performances, you know, and I think that's one of the gifts about something like the Soul Train Awards. They never really have any bad performances. Even if there's an, a performance that isn't as eventful, it's not terrible. And I think it just goes back to they have a standard for what they want when they perform. So, you know, even if the person on stage isn't giving the best performance, everything else that's surrounding them as far as the musical arrangements can drown out whatever things are not as pleasant. You know what I mean? Uh, but again, I just hope more people start showing up because it, what, what, what will happen is, you know, when they start saying, OK, nobody's watching these awards, so let's just pull the plug. So when we get to the point where the only thing you're left with is the Grammys and the VMAs, I don't want to hear nothing because you know we ain't invited to that. And I just think back because if you just think back, even like when I was growing up, there were so many award shows. Like I mean, a rack of them. And I'm talking about award shows specifically for like um, black performers. So you, uh, in addition to something like the Soul Train Awards, you know, you had the Lady of Soul Awards, you had the Vibe Awards, you had the Source Awards, you had the NAACP Awards. There used to be all kinds of award shows that would only happen once or twice and then never happen again. But it was like literally there were so many award shows and all of the big names would actually show up. You know what I mean? It wasn't just I'm too good. I'm selling out stadiums. I'm not coming. Oh, no. Michael Jackson was like, OK, I know my leg is broke, but I'll still perform. Remember the time for the Soul Train Awards. You know what I mean? So and I ain't trying to be rude. Ain't nobody out here in 2018 Michael Jackson. So if he was good enough to go to the Soul Train Awards, some of y'all humble down. Anyway, that's my two cents. I'm out. Subscribe.